Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I want to remind everybody before, look, while, with all this FTX stuff going on and all the contagion and all the stuff, Ledger Nano S, I use them, um, using a hard wallet uh, so that you can control your own keys, that's the only way to go. We're, we're seeing all kind, hearing rumors and all kinds of things about what is going wrong and could go wrong, it's the only way to go. Um, they have 10% off on the on the bundle, some of the bundle, the packs, where you can get two or three of these things for a 10% discount, um, or you can just get them uh, individually. The link to this will be in the top of the description. Click on the link. Tell them DAI sent you. Now, Link2 has been doing recaps, okay? They're at Swell, okay? We've got Nick Burefado, who's with um, Link2. You, otherwise known as Mr. B XRP, um, they posted highlights from day one. I, I encourage you to watch them, but I clipped out a couple of his summaries of a conversation he had with both Brad Garlinghouse and Stuart Alvarati. Okay, so I'm going to take you through my notes from the day. It's quite loud in here, so I apologize. Um, first thing is, I, I met with Brad Garlinghouse face to face, and Brad was so confident. He's got an air of confidence about him that's unbelievable. I met Brad first in 2019 back in Singapore, and he's even more confident today than he was back then. He made it clear that they're ready to settle with the SEC as long as they can get clarity on XRP. I asked I asked him if American companies were waiting on the sidelines to jump in the game once clarity happens, and he said absolutely, and he specifically said Bank of America. Bank of America is a huge partner of Ripple, and he said Bank of America, um, Bank of America stands to gain really big when the settlement happens because they're going to have a huge competitive advantage over their competitors by using ODL in the marketplace. So Brad is very, very bullish. When asked what what you know what motivates Brad every day, Brad just said, I want to put a dent in the universe. So we've heard that from Navi and Gipta and, and Brad has the same philosophy. So that was fantastic. That was my one-on-one -on -one with Brad. All right, so there's his one-on-one -on -one with Brad, and then here's his one-on-one -on -one with Stuart Alderati. I also chatted with Stuart Alderati, who, as everyone knows, is a counsel for Ripple. Stuart is such an impressive person. His confidence is unbelievable. You can just tell he's a master of what he does. He said the Amicas, hopefully I'm saying it right, all of them were so helpful to the case and are helpful to the case. He said multiple times he would settle within an hour if they would give clarity to XRP. He made it very clear that they are ready, but, but I love the fact that we're hearing from Brad and we're hearing from Stuart that, that the clarity to XRP is still a deal killer. They've got to have it. And the other thing that really struck me with, uh, with Stuart Alderati was Stuart said, I have it quoted, I have it written here on my page. He said, when we win. So he fully expects to win. I love it. Uh, Stuart Alderati seems like a, such a sophisticated, um, measured guy. When this is all over, you know what my dream would be? I'd like to meet Stuart Alderati, that's one thing, but what I think, because of how serious and straight-laced of a guy he seems to be, you know how, how I would like to cap off this thing with? I don't even like doing shots, but I'd like to do a fireball shot with Stuart Alderati, and Brad Garlinghouse is welcome to join us too. But to me, that would be a funny photo op right there, <laughs> or video. Okay, um, so here's some other shots that they had. That's uh, Nick Birafedo with both of those guys. And then um, he said, uh, judging, look at this. This is the judging panel. I think uh, I think he told me that this was some kind of hackathon. Look who's on the judging panel. BIS Innovation Hub, um, Accenture, MasterCard, PricewaterhouseCooper. Wow. That's one cast of characters there. Then Brad Garlinghouse was in this video. This is with uh, the XR Paynet guy. Well, if I can get it to play. 
So you here with go. here with Christian from XRP XRP oh, Pay Nets, which I have heard of before today. Thrilled to have you this watch. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. All right. So um, there's that. I'm trying to just show you a few things I saw. They had some videos they put out, but for some reason Ripple's putting copyright music over the top of their um, of their music. I guess they don't want them played in social media or whatever. But here's Brad on stage, and then there's in link to those videos they posted. Link to had some of the uh, the interview with Brad Garlinghouse on stage. Now I want to remind everybody, uh, Tom Emmer and these guys, they did win the house, and so we are supposed to have a new day now. So let's remember, remind you of this. The SEC isn't interested in clarifying what areas of the crypto industry fall under SEC jurisdiction. We know that because FinHub, that you've referred to, the SEC division focused on crafting crypto regulation, has essentially dissolved under Gensler. Nonetheless, while abandoning good faith attempts clarify how to clarify how the commission's existing authority applies to digital assets, the SEC is hell-bent on expanding the size of its crypto enforcement division and using enforcement to unconstitutionally expand its jurisdiction. Under Chair Gensler, the SEC has become a power-hungry regulator, politicizing enforcement, baiting companies to, quote, come in and talk to the commission, then hitting them with enforcement actions and discouraging good faith cooperation. Understand, sir, there is a new day coming. Thank you. All right. So there's a new day coming, but I just wanted to reiterate that to my knowledge, only Joseph Lubin and Sam Bankman-Fried have been able to successfully come in and see us at the SEC. Um, now, moving along, this is interesting. Um, this guy says that six months ago, the SEC investi investigated FTX um, on multiple matters. They found no wrongdoing. Well, ironically, the SEC investigated Madoff, too, and found no fraud. Okay? What a coincidence. Then this person read the FTX bankruptcy, and look at some of the things that came out of this. Employees submitted expense reimbursements over chat. Related party loans, Almeida Research, their FTX's hedge fund, gave Sam Bankman Fried a $1 billion personal loan, also loaned Director of Engineering $543 million. That's a hell of a loan. Um, very few records were kept. Most decisions were made over chat. FTX company valued at $32 billion, never had board meetings. Neither did most of the subsidiaries. You'd think that in the SEC's investigation, they might find out that they didn't even have board meetings. That might be something relevant, wouldn't you think? FTX had no cash management system. They um, didn't keep proper records uh, of who they employed. Employees, contractors commingled throughout the different companies. Corporate funds were used to purchase personal use real estate. And employees and executives put their names on homes purchased with company funds. Crypto deposited by customers weren't even recorded on the balance sheet. The filing, I mean, unbelievable, folks. My 10-year-old could have figured this out if he did an investigation. Well, it looks like David Schwartz found, figured it out. These are my words, not his. FTX was not an exchange. It was a market manipulation op operation. David Schwartz smells, he smells what's cooking, says an admitted $7 billion error in, the, in his assessment of how much risk to customer deposits his trades were taking easily makes him one of the worst traders of all time. This puts Sam Bankman Fried on the list of these. I don't even know who those names are, but he's retweeting Sam Bankman Fried's tweet about, as it turned out I was wrong, leverage wasn't $5 billion, it was $13 billion. This guy says, so how did he get so wealthy in the first place? Luck? And David says, everyone in crypto got rich then. How can you not get rich when Bitcoin goes 25 times in two years? And then after that, he had a limited window to exploit inefficiencies in crypto markets, but that ran out as, as soon as others caught up. Okay? <sighs> Folks, this thing stinks so bad. Then uh, Charles Gasparino, sources close to Manhattan U.S. Attorney um, say um, the office is looking to prepare charges by the end of the year over FTX scandal following further disclosures of, of Sam Bankman fried alleged misuse of customer funds as authorities in Bahamas look to take lead on the case. Okay. Then let's see what we have next. Well, here's Patrick McHenry, who's now going to run the Finance Committee 
in the House. Listen to this. He was on CNBC. Congressman, one of the things that's been speculated about over the past couple of days as we've seen this fallout is Sam Beckman fried as a major donor to the Democratic Party, uh, with some contending that because of those donations, uh, he either has been protected or that the industry has been protected from regulations that otherwise would have prevented such a uh, collapse and uh, prote- potentially fraud from occurring. Uh, do you believe that or not? Well, we'll get to the bottom of that. And I'm on the I'm, I'm coming in as the, uh, the chair of the Financial Services Committee. We deal with the bank regulation and market regulation. I'll let others pontificate about the nature of what they did here in Washington. Uh, and I'll let law enforcement look at that. The fact is, you had industry coming to Washington saying our preferred regulator is the CFTC. And they wanted light touch regulation and insistence on it. Uh, that was their goal. And yep. uh, I think that has been called into question after this meltdown. Uh, so but I think the reason, I'm, the reason I'm asking the about the donations to regulation and clarity and law. OK, so that was one segment. And then there was another one for next month. And by the way, the gentleman we were just quoting, Congressman, uh, worked on the Enron uh, bankruptcy. So, you know, he puts all this a little bit in perspective or context and just how bad it may very well be. Do you well, this believe is the, ultimately this is though, the Enron moment uh, for this nascent industry? And this is the reason why you have a bipartisan call for hearings. And that's uh, the reason why the outgoing chair of the House Financial Services Committee, the incoming chair, uh, it's Maxine Waters and I, uh, have called for a hearing. We're going to have a hearing in December. This is the first bipartisan hearing I've seen under uh, the Democrat Congress in the last four years uh, in our committee. Uh, this is noteworthy because it is uh, the entry point for our longer term conversations around how you uh, put up consumer protections uh, and a regulatory framework uh, for a really important uh, new set of technology. So, Congressman, here's the here's the real question, though, and which is I mean, straight up, could have this been avoided if in yes. truth, if in truth, this was a fraud, a massive fraud, a Ponzi scheme? a combination of mismarking assets purposely, of potentially stealing assets, of uh, commingling assets and the like. Do you believe that regulation, and and by the way, in another country, do you believe that regulation here could have prevented it? Uh, For US consumers, yes. Uh, We've had a complete failure by the regulators. Uh, We do not have clarity from the CFTC or the SEC We don't have clarity from banking regulars. So uh, banks can't even hold these assets as a a custodian uh, for their customers. And moreover, not only do we have uh, a lack of clarity, uh, we have this Securities Exchange Commission chair made a decision that uh, that custody of uh, digital assets cannot occur. Uh, So Coinbase is holding those assets on its books. FTX US is holding it on its books. So there you go. And then I don't know what in the world this is, but apparently this guy's walking around on his phone in the Bahamas like nothing's going on. That was that came out yesterday. And then breaking crypto exchange, Gemini suffers $485 million rush of outflows amid fear of bankruptcy. Um, Now, then this morning and the official cool guy, the digital asset investor channel picked up on it here. You see what they're doing. They're trying to mix in XRP with Sologenic. Okay, now remember, at, remember this clip the other day with um, Fox Business where, um, where Maria Bartiromo literally set this Bitcoin maxi lady up so that she could try to p- draw a parallel between EF, FTX and, um, and Ripple? Well, this, th- there's more going on here than meets the eye. The first thing is she said, um, her name is Natalie Brunel, she said that Fox Business was going to retract their little ticker that showed that there was going to be a ripple settlement the next day. And she said she had nothing to do with it. And she was kind of waffling on, on, um, I mean, I got, I asked her point blank. I said, do you, have you heard anything? And she was like, well, you'll have to ask them. She wouldn't answer the question. Well, then when I saw the Jim Cramer clip this morning, I said, wait a minute, this, this is too up. What they're now remember, Solana is t- is directly linked to FTX. It was all wrapped up in their their Solana and FTX. Those two things were kind of going hand in hand. 
Well, if you put these two clips together, the Jim Cramer clip and their clip, and remember, Jim Cramer never, and Maria Bartromo or Jim Cramer, they never talk about Ripple or XRP. But for them inside of one week, when this thing breaks, to both bring up Ripple and XRP, and to bring them up in a negative light, trying to draw a parallel to FTX and Solana, stinks to high heaven. Now watch these clips together. I put them Does together. This does this FTX story have the potential to create wider losses in more assets and more traditional assets? I know you're expecting a settlement tomorrow uh, in the lawsuit between the Securities and Exchange Commission and Ripple. The SEC's filing from 2020 alleged that Ripple Labs and two of its executives raised over $1.3 billion through an unregistered digital securities offering. This is a separate case, but your thoughts on whether any of this has the potential to take down other markets like the stock market. But we, we can put up these currencies and like I question, well, what do we know about Solana? What do we know about XRP? I mean, and the answer is zero. And the reason why we know zero. Well, that's not true. We know a ton. You just don't want to act like you know. Because the government doesn't feel necessary, doesn't feel that it should be regulated. Uh, and we put them up. Uh, we could put up a uh, lots of we could have put up Enron. That was a very well traded stock. So I mean, I question why we put so, these folks, up. Here's what's so crazy about this: not only did he compare it to Solana, but he comp compared it to Enron. We've shown things for over two years that make Ethereum look way, way closer to something like an Enron or an MF Global or whatever. This guy's never even mentioned it. I mean, we've shown evidence for two and th almost three years of ethgate this guy never said a word about it but he said he, he admittedly says he knows nothing about xrp but he's going to draw a parallel to enron with xrp what this guy is no good folks i think we all know that by now that guy he has no business telling anybody anything he's a narrative carrier he doesn't tell he doesn't tell you the financial news that guy is no good i mean I, had, I never had any, I never realized just how bad that guy was till, till recently. I knew he was full of it, but I didn't know that he was really bad. Okay, what, <laughs> this is a great answer. What's the most Web3 sentence you can say? And Jack Dorsey says A16Z. Wow. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Web3 is somewhere between A and Z.